Well, it's finally happening. The markets are crashing. YouTubers are selling their entire investment accounts, millions and millions of dollars worth of their portfolios. Crypto's lost 50% of its value since its highs last November, and even CNN recommends that we just forget our passwords for our retirement accounts. Everybody have a great week getting their asses kicked in the market. I'm pretty good. You're okay? Everybody pretty okay? Good. Nobody I can't even look. I can't look at my portfolio anymore. I just stopped <laughs> checking it. I, uh, <laughs> not a fan of the color red. <laughs> so it's time, whether I like it or not, to give an update, a quarterly update on my investment account experiment I started way back in April of 2020. The tech-centric NASDAQ has fallen hard, beyond correction territory, more than 10%. And the small caps and Russell index have just plain crashed this month, both of them well into correction territory. 70% or more of tech stocks are down 20% or more recently, and almost one half are down over 40%. It's our very own squid games, red light, green light, as we watch the market bounce and the volatility soar. Intraday swings of two, three, five percent are normal. And we're just casualties watching it happen as these wild swings take a bit every day, a bit more of what we've built since that event in March of 2020 when the virus hit and everything went on sale, a generational wealth building opportunity of things on sale. So have you sold recently or are you at least a little scared? Well, most people are. So it's time to see where my investment experiment, that account I opened up back in 2020, a Roth IRA maxing it out every year with $7,000 contribution, $6,000 if you're a whippersnapper, and see where it stands today. See what I've held on to, what I've lost. So what's your guess? Am I up? Am I down? Is it sideways? Have I lost my mind? Have I sold? Have I bought? Let's take a look. Hi, I'm James Callahan, and this is The Do-Over Show, where we try to get things right at least the second time around. And with an investment account, new lessons are learned every day, especially in times of market volatility. Now, before we dive into the numbers of my own account, let's look at the numbers of everybody's account and the indexes. And let's figure out what the heck has Jay Powell done to us this time. First, Papa Powell, Jerome Powell, head of the Federal Reserve, said that the Fed, back in December, he said the Fed would begin interest rate raises, but they were in no hurry. And then we found out it was going to happen harder and faster, high school band name, than even Jerome Powell thought just a month ago. And he's happy to let the markets get ahead of him. And in the short term, what that's going to do is recognize that inflation is realer than we thought. Yes, 7% is the headline number. Most of us know that it's well into the teens. It hasn't been that way since Jimmy Carter. And, and yes, it's been bad. So in the short term, what are people like us with a little bit of money in the market and relying on that lower left, upper right move of the markets? What are we supposed to do with our investment accounts, with our retirement accounts? And how are we supposed to feel about, well, the emotional thing, that's what Jay Powell calls it. That's what every economist calls it. Inflation is an emotional thing. It's not your fault. Don't fuck with me, all right? Don't fuck with me, Sean, not you. It's not your fault. <laughs> because we feel we don't have to or we shouldn't have to pay so much more for a gallon of gas or for milk or for an apartment or a house or a car. No, it's an emotional thing. Well, it's emotional because if we really wanted to pay what well, people would have in the 50s or 60s or 70s, we'd also have to live with the wages of the 50s, 60s or 70s. And none of us are giving up our higher wages today. So inflation, according to the Fed, is just your emotions getting ahead. So looking at my account, Here's what I've changed over the past quarter and into the start of 2022. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. No, I've kept investing and I've kept adding to my positions. I haven't sold anything. Why? Because I have confidence in these positions, that they're long-term dividend or growth potential in some, and that they're with me and I'm with them for the long haul. I've added to the monthly contribution, about $583 a month. And when the market takes a downturn, I have to tell you, the one thing that I really wish is that I had more money. That one twelfth of my annual investment in this Roth IRA, I wish I had a little bit more because when I see things on sale, I wanna buy.
And then the other one is I would always get really emotional and panic at the lows. So I hold 12 different stocks in my Roth IRA. I dollar cost average, one twelfth of the deposit every month, and I buy a little bit of most of the stocks and that mix of the 12 that I hold. And at 7,000 a year over two years, this account is now worth just over $19,000. Yes, that's a 36% return in just 21 months. A combination of dividend and yield using drip or dividend reinvestment and growth in stocks back when stock prices really actually went up ordinarily because that's what it looks like or that's what at least it used to look like once upon a time. So pick your analogy. It's like watching paint dry. It's like buying a chair to sit in the chair or follow Warren Buffett's advice about buying a house. Even if the value of the house decreases the next day, you don't sell the house. You live in it. Its utility is that it will increase in value and you will use it in the meantime. Well, dividend paying stocks are like buying that house. They pay me whether I'm awake or asleep, working or relaxing. Yes, dividend stocks are great. Or you can even follow the more dangerous advice. Someone like the 18th century Rothschild, who was part of the banking family, the Rothschild banking family, and Nathan Rothschild, who made his fortune in contrarian betting when panic hit the markets after Napoleon's Battle of Waterloo. You remember that. And he funded the British government, kind of like Warren Buffett did when he bought banks during the housing and banking crisis of the 2000s. Yep, that's the crash that happened before this crash that's scaring all of us. Nathan Rothschild's quote is a little more draconian though. He said, buy when there's blood in the streets, even if that blood is your own. It's called contrarian investing and amazingly, it works. Most of the time, almost all the time, it works. Even though it's painful at the time. I know people who even call it biblical and they start quoting from the book of Hebrews. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Cha-ching. It's the fear and greed tension that we're supposed to be greedy when everyone is afraid and we should probably be a little afraid when everybody is greedy. So whether we follow Warren Buffett's advice or Baron Rothschild's advice or the Bible, what we're after is a way of looking at market downturns as opportunities. So here are my numbers. My upfront investment of cash has been $14,000. And currently my cash position in the account is $14,970.10 as a cost basis. Now that $970.10, that's through dividend reinvestment. That is, I never see the money. It comes in one day and immediately buys a fractional share of the same company that paid the dividend. So I slowly build a position so that even value stocks actually grow ever so slightly at four, five, six percent annually because of dividend reinvestment. I don't have to make that decision. I made that decision when I picked the stocks in the first place. And today, I still own the same 12 stocks that I owned last year and the year before that. That is, I own Apple, Associated Bank Corp, B&G Foods, Duke Energy, Iron Mountain, Altria, Realty Income Corp, or O, Pfizer, Simon Property Group, or SPG, SPHD, or Invesco High Yield Low Volatility ETF, Presidio Property Trust, and Walgreens. Yep, Walgreens. Hey, and when I watch the markets fall because I didn't forget my password like CNN recommended, there are two things that I felt. First, I wish I had more of the 583 to invest this month. And second, happy? Yes, I'm happy because my balance today, like at the end of December before everything started to tank, is pretty much the same. So that means I'm just behind about $580. That was my monthly contribution. But that's less than 1% of the value of the account. How about you? Are you down just 1% in the value of your account? See, here's the thing with dollar cost averaging. It's supposed to take the emotions out of it. In fact, it adds an emotion that most of us are unfamiliar with when it comes to investing, and that is happiness. Dollar cost averaging beats trading more than 95% of the time because when we're in and out of the markets, we miss those sudden, unpredictable, jumps that make a year's worth of upside in just five to 15 days of trading. Yes, most of the upside to markets in our lifetime has been through just five to 15 days of upside each and every year. And if we dollar cost average throughout our investing lifetime, however long or even how short it is, we have a better chance 
of outperforming the markets and outperforming everyone who's trading and everyone who's panicked when the market tanks. And that's the second part of what's going on today in the market, this contrariness, this opportunity that we have to keep investing and averaging our way into positions that we started or that we have confidence in for the long run. Hey, and I'll admit that takes a big adjustment in our psychology, our approach towards money and how we view things, panic days when everyone else and all the headlines scream, sell, sell, sell. It's on those days when everyone is yelling, sell, 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 and everything is red, that people like us should start to feel, hmm, I wonder what I can buy that's on sale. Hey, and if you're ready to take the next step and figure out where you stand in the market today, I've done a video about diversification and finding your sweet spot, finding the mix of stocks, the things that we have confidence in that will build long-term and sustainable growth in our accounts. You can check out that video here. And thanks for being with me today on The Do-Over Show. I wish you the best of luck in the ups and downs of the red light, green light of today's market. And please, while you're here, would you subscribe and ring the notifications bell so you don't miss the next episode. I'm so glad you found me and I found you. Thanks.